Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we'll talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. So today's topic is drying. We will see what is drying, how it is different from evaporation and what are various theories of drying. So let's start the video. So drying is a process of removal of small amount of liquid by the application of heat to obtain a dry solid product. A drying process generally involves two operations. First is heat transfer which is the transfer of heat from the environment to the solid to be dried and second is the mass transfer which is the transfer of liquid from the wet mass to the environment. Now let's see the difference between two confusing terms drying and evaporation. Drying is carried out on solid materials like powders whereas evaporation is carried out on liquid materials such as solutions. In drying only a small amount of water is removed from the solids whereas in evaporation a large amount of water is removed from the solutions. Drying takes place at a temperature below the boiling point of water whereas evaporation takes place at a temperature close to its boiling point. In drying water is usually removed by circulating air over the material to be dried while in evaporation water is removed from the material as pure water vapors. Now let's see some of the applications of drying. Since drying removes all the moisture from a product which helps in microbial growth, hence it helps in preservation of drugs. Since drying causes reduction in weight, it makes transportation and storage of drugs more convenient. Drying produces materials of spherical shape and uniform size and hence improves the flowability of products. Now let's understand about some theories of drying. In any material to be dried, there are two types of water present in it, bound water and unbound water. Bound water is present in hygroscopic materials, water is present in fine capillaries, cell and fiber walls and there is a physical interaction between the material and the water, whereas unbound water is present in the void spaces of non-hygroscopic materials. In bound water, the vapor pressure of wet solid is less than that of the vapor pressure of pure water, whereas in unbound water, the vapor pressure of wet solid is equal to the vapor pressure of pure water. The first theory is called the equilibrium relationship. Suppose for drying a wet material, air of constant humidity and temperature is passed over it and after a long exposure, an equilibrium is attained between these two. The humid air passing over the material is having a vapor pressure of Vp1 and the wet mass is having a vapor pressure of Vp2. So the amount of water which exerts a vapor pressure equal to the vapor pressure of the atmosphere surrounding is called the equilibrium moisture content. So if the moisture in solid is more than that of AMC then it will lose water to the surrounding which is called as desorption and if the moisture content of solid is less than that of AMC then it will gain water from the surrounding which is called as desorption. This theory is summarized in this diagram. So at equilibrium, vapor pressure of wet mass is equal to the vapor pressure of the atmosphere and the amount of water is called the EMC. But when the moisture in solid is more than EMC of liquid, then it will lose water to the atmosphere and it is called as desorption. And when the moisture in solid is less than EMC of solid, then it will gain moisture from the atmosphere which is called as desorption. The second theory is called the rate relationships. In this theory also, we dry a wet mass by passing air of constant humidity and temperature and the difference in weight is determined at different time intervals. Using these observations, percent LOD, percent moisture content and drying rate is calculated using these formulas. Using these calculations, a graph is plotted which is called the drying rate curve. It has drying rate on y axis and moisture content on x axis. The first phase which is from A to B or A dash to B, it is called the initial adjustment period. During this period, the solid absorbs heat and the temperature increases. At the same time, the moisture begins to evaporate and thus tends to cool the drying solid. After some time, the heating and cooling rate becomes equal and this temperature is equal to the wet bulb temperature of the drying air, which is referred by the point B. The second phase which is from B to C is called the constant rate period. The temperature and the rate of drying is constant in this phase. The moisture evaporating from the surface is replaced by the water diffusing from the interior of the solid. The rate of diffusion is equal to the rate of evaporation and the moisture content at the end of constant rate is referred to as the critical moisture content. The third phase which is from C to D is called the first falling rate period. During this period, the surface water is no longer replaced at a rate fast enough to maintain a continuous film on the surface. 
dry spots begin to appear and the rate of drying begins to fall. The point D is referred to as the second critical point and at this point the film of surface water is completely evaporated. The next phase D2E is called the second falling rate period. During this period the rate of drying falls even more rapidly than the first falling rate. During this period the rate of drying is dependent on the rate of diffusion of moisture to the surface of solid and point E is referred to as the equilibrium moisture content. Beyond E the drying rate is equal to zero and therefore the temperature and moisture content remains constant. Beyond E continued drying is a waste of time and energy. So guys this was all about basic theories of drying. Thanks for watching. I really hope you liked my video and if you did like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.